Those German words that you always see on lists of the coolest literally translated German compound nouns aren't actually that cool, or even unique to German. In fact, English does this kind of thing all of the time. Here are a few examples of words that people have been showing online as words that are better in German than they are in English, and they are wrong. Stinktier, literally a stink animal. In English, we call this a skunk. While this word is entertaining in German, it's more entertaining in English, but no one seems to realize it. The English word skunk is a combination of two Proto-Algonquian words, which I will now butcher the pronunciation of. Sek, which means to urinate, and ok, which means fox. So this became sekakwa, which eventually turned into the word that we now know as skunk. So while the Germans may call this a stinktier, a stink animal, we English speakers call it a urinating fox. Durchfall, literally fall through. This word is often listed as a funny German word because it describes what it is. But in English, diarrhea does exactly the same thing. It was coined by the Greek physician Hippocrates, and it's just Greek for a flowing through, which seems like exactly the same thing to me. So who would use this word on one of those lists? Der Durchfall, diarrhea, literally through hmm. fall. Well, that's awkward. Flusspferd, river horse, or in English, hippopotamus. The German word for hippopotamus seems to imply that hippos are just fat horses that live in water. The English word hippopotamus comes from the Latin word hippos, which is horse, and the adjective word for river or rushing water, which is potomus. So even the English word a hippo is a horse in a river. Again, the German and English are exactly the same. Stachelschwein, prickle or spike pig. In English, we call this a porcupine. This one fascinates me because I recognize the similarity immediately when I hear the word porcupine. It's pork, i.e. comes from a pig, and pine, which means that it's like spines, which is another word for a spike or prickle. The English word again comes from the Latin, which is porcus, which is pig, and spina, which is thorn. In English, it's a thorny pig, and in German, it's a pig with spikes. See the difference? Waschbär. Literally, a wash bear. In English, we call this a raccoon. This one often gets mentioned because there are a lot of German words for animals that have either pig or bear at their base. And then there's some kind of adjective that describes the pig or bear. In this case, we get a bear that washes. More specifically, it refers to the raccoon's habit of washing his food before he eats it. In English, this word we use is raccoon. It comes from the Algonquian word aracun which is in turn derived from the word aracunum, which means he scratches with his hands. It refers to the same practice as the German one does, but we don't recognize it as easily because the English uses other roots for its words rather than using the English words to make a combination. Which is cooler, a bear that washes his food or an animal that scratches his food? Gürteltier, belt animal, or armadillo in English. In German, this is an animal that has a belt around it, which refers to the hard outer shell of the armadillo. The English word is without a doubt cooler this time. It comes from the combination of the Spanish word armad, or armado, which means armed, and the Latin diminutive suffix illo. This means that the English speakers call this animal a little armored animal, while the Germans just think it's wearing a belt. Faultia, lazy animal, or sloth in English. I find it odd that people don't think that the English word is the same for this one. The English word sloth literally is a word for a deadly sin for being incredibly lazy. If anything, the English word is slightly stronger than the wording in German, as the word sloth indicates a laziness that is beyond normal laziness. Glühwürmchen, glowing worm. In this version, English is more accurate. The German version indicates that it's a worm that glows. In English, we call it a firefly. This draws upon both important parts of this insect. It looks like it's on fire, and it flies. The German version seems to think that it can't fly, which would be kind of cool to see a bunch of worms just crawling around and blinking and stuff, but it isn't what's happening. To the German word's credit, however, it is more accurate to say that they're glowing rather than they are on fire. Flugzeug, flight thing. In English, we call this an airplane. Lots of German words that end with Zeug make it onto lists like this. Flugzeug is usually the first one that people gravitate towards. It's a thing, and it flies. Let's call it a flight thing. Sure, but the English is basically the same, but it's slightly more convoluted. 
The word airplane was originally spelled aeroplane, but whether it's spelled air or aero, the meaning is the same. It's in the air. The word plane is an old French word, which is used to refer to birds that weren't flapping their wings. This is most closely related to the English word float or glide, as it's used to describe a thing that floats or glides. So, in English, it's a floating or gliding thing that goes through the air. To simplify it further, in English, it's a flat object that floats through the air. Fahrzeug, drive thing, or automobile. Speaking of words that end with Zeug, this is definitely one of the dumbest ones on the list. The word automobile, or automobile in English, is the thing that is mobile and uses its own power. That's what the auto part means. If you choose the translation of car, it has several different origin theories, but they basically mean the same thing. The French, car, which is a wheeled chariot, Latin, carros, which is a chariot, Gaulish, which is carros, which means cart or wagon, Proto-Indo-European is curs, which means to run. It's a thing that has wheels and it runs, meaning that it uses its own energy to move. Mutterkuchen, mother cake. Literally a combination of the word mother and cake. While some people do eat it, which I find incredibly gross, the English word isn't far off. This word, placenta, comes from the same word in Latin, which literally translates as cake. While the word mother might be missing from the English, the implication is pretty gross for both versions. Krankenwagen, sick wagon, ambulance. Another case of people not understanding the origins of a word. This comes from the French word hospital ambulant, which I'm sure I mispronounced, which means walking hospital. I like the imagery of the English version better, but the German version does have a certain appeal to it. So the next time you see someone put up a list of words that they think are better in German than they are in English, tell them their naivety has gone far enough. English can be cool too. The more you know about a language, the more you will come to appreciate the little nuances of the language. While you're here, you might also want to watch this video of mine. Click that little box over there and I'll meet you at the next URL. Cheese!